Hi everyone, this is Mrs. G.A. and today we are going to learn about sequences and summation notation. So a sequence is simply a set of natural numbers. Um, it can be written in a few different ways. So it can be written as a formula for the nth term, which we'd call a sub n of the sequence. So it could be something like this. Here's an example of the sequence. So again, n I like to call like the place in line. So if n equals 1, it's the first term. If n equals 5, it's the fifth term. And then a sub n is the actual term. So a sub 5 would be the fifth term of your sequence. Um, you can also write the sequence as a list. So if I were to list out this sequence, write the first term, 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 3 is 6. So I'm listing out the sequence um, in this way. So those are the different ways you might see a sequence written. So first we're going to practice um, finding the first five terms of a sequence, or you could find any term in the sequence if you have the formula. So let's, let's start with this first sequence. Um, it's a sub n equals n over n plus 1. So to find the first term, we would call it a sub 1. Again, that means the first term. And we're simply going to replace n with 1. So 1 over 1 plus 1 is 1 half. So that's the first term. And then we can do the same for a sub 2, right? So again, we're going to replace n with 2. So it would be 2 over 3. a sub 3 is 3 over 4. a sub 4, the fourth term, is 4 over 5. And a sub 5 would be 5 over 6. So we just found the first um, five terms of that sequence. Um, so why don't you pause the video and see if you can find the first five terms of this sequence. a sub n equals negative 1 to the power of n over 2 to the power of n. And we'll check your answer in just a few seconds. Okay, so go ahead and check your first five terms. Um, so one thing to point out, um, if you ever want to create a sequence that's alternating between negative and positive, this is the way to achieve that, where you have negative 1 to the power of n, or you could do negative 1 to the power of n plus 1 or n minus 1 if you would like to flip the order. And then a th something you'll notice on the bottom, if you want to grow exponentially so each time it doubles, a way you can do that is by doing um, base 2 to the power of n. Or if you want it to triple, you would do base 3 to the power of n. Um, but these should be your first five terms. All right, so now we're going to see if we can find the nth term of a sequence whose first terms are listed below. Um, so when we have something like this, th what we're going to need to do is we're going to actually need to create the formula for that sequence, and that can tell us the nth term or whatever term we want to find. So here we're going to be looking for um, some type of pattern. So let's um, look for a pattern in the numerator first. So again, we're creating a sub n equals. So for the numerator, you'll notice that um, the numbers are all of the odd numbers. So a really common way, this is a really common pattern that you'll see. So the way that you can create odd numbers is by doing 2 times n minus 1. So it's double the place in line minus 1. So again, this is when n equals 1. This is when n equals 2. This is when n equals 3. And this is when n equals 4. So hopefully you notice, well, this number is 1 less than twice the place in line. So this is one less than four, this is one less than six. So this is just a way to look for a pattern. So that's gonna be the pattern in the top. And in the bottom, um, you'll notice a different pattern. We're increasing simply by two each time. So if you compare n with the denominator, here we have a one and a two. Here we have a two and a four. Here we have a three and a six. You'll notice that um, the denominator is simply double n. So it's going to be two n. So this formula would tell us the nth 
place in line. So if I wanted to find the 75th term, I would just plug in 75 for n. So this can tell us any term in the sequence. So again, it's just a matter of looking for patterns and finding relationships between the numbers you see and the place in line, the n value. Okay, let's look at this next one. So here, again, we see that alternating pattern between positive and negative, which we saw in that previous example. So we know that we can achieve that by doing negative 1 to the power of n. And again, this is when n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on and so forth. So you can see when, um, n, is e when n is an odd number, right, you're going to maintain a negative value. But when n is an even number, the negatives will cancel out and it will become positive, which is what we want. And then we have to find a way to describe this doubling pattern. So remember, when it's doubling, it's actually going to be an exponential type function. So since it's doubling, we're going to do base 2 to the power of n. Or maybe you notice this is 2 to the first power, this is 2 squared, this is 2 cubed, 2 to the fourth, 2 to the fifth. So again, just another pattern we're trying to recognize. And this can tell us the nth term of this sequence. Okay, so now we're going to talk about a different type or a different way to write sequences. These are called recursive sequences. So sometimes when we're working with sequences, it's easier to define um, each term in reference to one or more of the previous terms rather than to its place in line. Um, so there is a really famous recursive sequence that you've probably heard of before, the Fibonacci sequence. So here you can see I've listed out um, a few terms of the Fibonacci sequence. And the pattern of the Fibonacci sequence is if you add the two previous terms, so if I add up 1 plus 1, we get the next term, 2. And then if I add up 1 plus 2, we get the next term, 3. And if I add up 2 plus 3, we get the next term, 5. So you can see here that each term is actually defined by two of the previous terms. So the way that you would write this, since it's defined by two of the previous terms, we do need to actually list out what the first two terms are. So we'd say a sub 1 equals 1, a sub 2 equals 1. So we do have to state what the first two terms are. And then, again, we know that the next term, so a sub n, is going to be the sum of the term right before it and the term 2 before it. So the term before n would be n minus 1. And the term 2 before n would be a sub n minus 2. So this is how you would write that Fibonacci sequence recursively. So again, notice that in my sequence, it's no longer in reference to n, it's in reference to a previous term, or in this case, two previous terms. Okay, so now let's see if we can work with this recursive sequence, and let's see if we can list out the first five terms. Um, so here you can see that they told us what the first term is because it is recursive. We do need to be given that value. Um, and then they tell us that um, a sub n is 3 times a sub n minus 1, which when I see this, in my mind I'm thinking the term before. And then plus 2. So again, if I'm finding the fourth term, I have to use the third term. So let's start with the obvious one. We know that um, the first term is 1 because it's given. So to find the second term, again, we do 3 times. Well, a sub n minus 1 would be the first term, which is 1 plus 2. So that second term is 9. To find a sub 3, we do 3 times a sub 3 minus 1, which is a sub 2. So 9 plus 2 which gives us 33. To find a sub 4, we do 3 times our previous term, 33, plus 2, which would be 105. And to find the fifth term, we do 3 times the term before, 105 plus 2, which is 
321. So just um, in case it helps, again, we took the term before, a sub 1, and then it was used here. 9 was used here, 33 was used here, and 105 was used here. So whenever you see a sub n minus 1, it means one term before. Okay, so the last thing we're going to talk about um, in today's video is what's called partial sums. So a partial sum is the sum of the first n terms of a sequence. So it's denoted in this way. So when you see s sub 1, it, we can read that as the first partial sum, and that is just the sum of the first one term. So it's simply the first term. When you see s sub 2, we can call it the second partial, partial sum, and it's the sum of the first two terms. The third partial sum, again, look here, is the sum of the first three terms. So you can kind of see the pattern here. The nth partial sum would be the sum of the first n terms. Um, so this is how you would denote it. And again, you're simply adding up the first um, however many number of terms in your sequence. Okay, so let's see if we can give this a try. Um, here, let's find the first four partial sums of a sub 1 equals 1 over 2 to the power of n. So the first partial sum is simply the first term. So 1 over 2 to the power of 1, which is 1 half. Um, the second partial sum would be the sum of the first two terms. So our first term is 1 half. Our second term, if you plug in n equals 2, would be 1 fourth. So that gives us 3 fourths. Our third partial sum would be the sum of the first three terms. So there's the first two, and our third term would be 1 over 2 to the uh, 2 cubed, which is 1 eighth, and then you add those up and you should get 7 eighths. And then the fourth partial sum would be the sum of the first four terms. So we already have the first three. The fourth term would be 1 over 2 to the power of four. And that gives us 15 sixteenths. Um, so you'll see later on in this chapter, there are some formulas that we'll learn to find um, the partial sums of specific types of sequences. Um, but of course, this is something when, you know, it's a smaller partial sum, you could always do it by hand. Okay, so um, a different way of writing a summation is with what's called sigma notation. So this is the Greek letter sigma, which you'll see here in sigma notation, and it can be used to write a partial sum, or it can be used to write the sum of terms k through n. So let's say you wanted to find the sum of the fourth through twelfth terms. You can write that using sigma notation. So here's how it works. On the bottom, we have what's called the index. And um, a lot of textbooks use K, some use I, some use N. It doesn't really matter what, um, what letter this is. Um, so here, this, this number states what term we start with. So if they say K equals 1, it means start with the first term. If they say K equals 10, then you would start with the 10th term. The number on top is the number that the term that you will end with. So in this case, you're starting with the first term and you're ending with the fifth term. And then over here, you're going to actually write the sequence or the formula for the nth term. So notice that these two variables do match, okay? So again, it's a way to describe a partial sum or you can use it to describe the sum of say like the 12th through 15th term. Okay, so let's see if we can find each sum. Um, so this first one, notice here that we're starting with the first term and we're ending with the fifth term. And then the um, formula we're working with is k squared. So they want us to find the fifth partial sum, essentially. So they want us to do 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 4 squared plus 5 squared. So those are the first five terms. And then you would add those up and then you get... 55. Okay, let's look at this next one. So here you can see that our index number 
is 5, so we're starting with the 5th term of our sequence, and we're ending with the 10th term, so the 5th through 10th sum. And our sequence here is simply just i, so you're literally listing whatever this number is. So our 5th term is 5, our 6th term is 6, plus 7, plus 8, plus 9, plus 10. So these are the 5th through 10th terms, and again, they would like us to find the summation of that. So you just add them up, and it gives you... 45. So again, this is just um, a different way of writing um, a summation. Okay, so now let's see if we can kind of work our way backwards. So here uh, we have a summation listed out and we're going to see if we can write it using sigma notation. So here first we can look for the pattern. So the pattern you can see is the place in line cubed. So the first term is one cubed, the second term is two cubed. So we can call this k cubed. And you can see that we actually started with the first term. So we, our index number is k equals 1. And then you can see that it goes all the way up to the sixth term. So this is that sum written in, sum in sigma notation. OK, let's see if we can find a way to write this sum using sigma notation. So you can see here um, that our pattern is just the square root of the place in line. And you can see that here we're actually starting with the third term and we're ending with the 77th term. So that's one way you can describe this. So again, I'll use a different variable this time, maybe i. Um, so we have square root of i as our formula. And then we're starting with the third term, which would make it root 3. And we're ending with the 77th term. So this is how you would write that sum using sigma notation. Okay, the last thing I want to talk about with sums is um, a few of the properties. We'll be working more with these um, in the later sections of this chapter. So um, sums have some really useful properties. Um, that you can use to help you evaluate. It can save you a lot of time if you're comfortable with these. So if you are finding the sum of um, two um, sequences or formulas that can be added, a sub k plus b sub k, you can actually find their individual sums and add those sums together. Uh, likewise, if you're finding the sum of two um, formulas that can be represented as a difference, you can find their individual sums and then just find the difference of those individual sums. Um, of course, these kind of go both ways. You can always uh, rewrite this as the original or you can rewrite this as the original. And then the last property says, if you're finding the sum of a formula that is being multiplied by the constant, by some constant, c, you can kind of pull the constant out, you can find the sum of the formula a sub k, and then you can multiply that sum by c at the end, or of course you can go um, backwards as well. So again, we'll be working more with um, these properties later on in this chapter. Um, okay, uh, so that is all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching.